Good afternoon, Mr. Carr. Good afternoon, Mr. Henley. How are you? All the better for being told by you it's out with anger and in with love. Or was it the other way around? <laughs> was it out with love and in with anger? Because we are talking oh, about marketing. We are talking about marketing. It's in with anger, out with love. Thank you. Okay, good. So I wanted to talk to you about marketing. As you know, I'm on this mission with my um, What The series. Uh, what on earth is going on with marketing? How do people do better with marketing? So I thought, who do I know who has the most experience of anything? And then who do I know who has the most experience of marketing? And I thought of you, Mr. Carr. So I thought we should have a conversation. So where we should start... Your memory is playing tricks with you, Martin. Mate, you've been away for too long. There's that barley beer. <laughs> it's not the barley beer. You have lots of experience of marketing, I'm sure. So okay. give us a sense of why, how are you qualified to talk to us about marketing? What is your experience? You look like you've had a lot of experience. Yeah, but that's only because I'm so old. By the time you get to my age, you know, you're just like the age of Noah. Okay, look, in short order, um, so my background in marketing is I went to art school, went to St. Martin's, and they taught me how to, how to communicate, how to be guileful, how to persuade. And then I left and worked up in London in the, uh, in the 1970s and 80s. And I started a small agency uh, in the 90s. I then moved into the world of the internet. So a group of us formed one of the early adopter internet companies led by marketing, not by techies. And we did really well for about six years, worked for all the corporates had a couple of really big clients, uh, moved away from the internet when the big agencies jumped on it. We were early adopters, so we really cleaned up in terms of excellent clients. We really respected them, did, did lots of work. Uh, then worked again in my own agency, so I built an agency up where we specialized in strategy and print and web, so we integrated it all. So I stopped all that about 10 years ago. I stopped virtually exclusively supplying clients with marketing skills, and now I do it for my own businesses. Uh, and that's possibly another question a bit later on with us. Does that, does that yes. a summary, Martin? Yes. Now, because you called your business the brand group, and because you went to art school, I always thought that you were a brand agency. Yeah. But you were. Well, I called myself brand group because I wanted to distinguish what I do from uh, people just doing copywriting, or just doing print, or just doing web. The brand, for me, and this goes back to the art school days, the brand is the beating heart of the business. It starts with that logo. It starts with understanding every single bit about the company at a visceral, emotional level. And that's where the brand starts. So we build a brand and then build out from that with the online work, with the print advertising, with the brochures, with the exhibitions, with the conferences, and calling yourself brand group gave you the capacity to speak to somebody almost a, within the board level. You were, you were their peripatetic marketing in-house. And that's what I wanted, because I, I only operate best when I understand the heart of the business. Now that... Whether that makes any sense as an answer, I don't know, but it certainly makes sense to me because I don't want to work with clients that don't have the same passion about marketing as I do, which means I have a very restricted client list now because I'm not for everybody's taste. If you don't understand how important your brand is, right down to the last full stop, and have the capacity to work around that brand, then you're not for me. Okay, so that makes sense. So, so not just design, like the whole of marketing. Marketing strategy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When did you start that business? I started that business in about 2000, 2001. So far, it's some time back. Okay. Yes. And now you have a couple of clients that you work with, but you're extraordinarily selective about who you want I'm to work with. Really super selective. I don't, I don't want, I want my clients to select me because they have to understand what I do. I'm, I'm not a genius, but I do believe I do it pretty well. But I also want to select my clients. So I think one of the faults of marketing is that we make decisions about who we work for and our clients choose us on a whim. I think the, the, the difficulty of being a marketeer is to find the clients you want to work with 
Well, from the client side, the buying side, it's equally difficult for them to find out who's going to work best for them. It's a, it's a bewilderingly short and failed process. The choice of, if you're on the, on the client side, the choice of who you choose is largely restricted, restricted to the people that you know are those that you're recommended to speak to and some that you find on the internet. And most companies don't go through the really long, arduous due diligence process of choosing who their marketing supplier is, their agency, their online agency, their strategist, because what you want is a long-term relationship with that marketing company. Because in the end, they should know more about the marketing of your business than you do. And if you get it right, and I got it right once or twice, I would then become the person that the interns and the, uh, the newly arrived people in the marketing department were sent along to my office to learn about my client's business because I knew more about the marketing of that company than they did. And that's exactly the right relationship because you are at the front end doing all the work. You can describe it in intrinsic detail. You're not just managing it, you're creating it. Okay, so there's two things there. I'm going to forget the second one, but the first one is like other than selling agencies, like when I talk to businesses who need to do marketing, I think the primary, the, the best, there's lots of good reasons, but the reason you want really effective marketing happening in your business is so that you can be selective about who you sell to. So if, for example, you have one lead a month coming into your business, then you've got no choice. You better sell to that, to that lead. If you've got 100 and you only need five new clients, then you can start being very fussy about who it is that you want to work with. So I think that's a very good reason for doing marketing. What was the second thing? A long-term relationship, of course. Um, of course it needs to be a long-term relationship if it works. Now, what they reckon is that the average lifespan of a digital marketing customer in London is three months. So Whoa. how is that serving anyone? You know, you go in for, you're there for three months, you've had enough, you end the relationship after three months. So I think it's entirely right what you're saying. And there was something else that I wanted to say. They're not selective because, and, and, and that's it, you were saying it's bewildering, it is bewildering because the way people think about marketing and specifically the way people sell marketing is bullshit. It is. <laughs> so absolutely. that brings me to... Yeah. Yeah, bullshit. so... Yeah, so... Well, I think that's marketing people's fault, Martin. I think marketing people have led their clients to believe that it's some sort of magical, super sexy process that only marketing people understand. Uh, and it's not. Marketing is an extremely easy thing to do in terms of its principles, and we can talk about the formula if you want to in this conversation, but it's really difficult to find people that can apply that formula in, um, in a communicating sense. People understand how to use color, how to use words, how to use sales funnels, uh, because you talk about marketing, but really, Companies like Coca-Cola, they're doing marketing, but a smaller company is really doing lead generating. Most small companies, they, they talk about marketing, what they really want is leads. And there's a really big distinction between those two. If you're marketing in a, in a, in a soft way, if you've got lots of PR happening, if you've got huge numbers going out into your online marketing, and it's about the brand, it's about perpetual contact of your brand with your customers. That's marketing. Lead generation is what most of the SMEs are trying to do. Does that make sense? Yes. Now that makes perfect sense. And I don't think, so the way I, the way I used to tell people about it is selling marketing is a little bit like selling gym membership. So when you're talking to them, they are hugely infused and they're ready to commit and they're ready to do everything they need to do. But the truth is, three weeks later, they'd rather stay at home and eat cake. Absolutely right. And, and that, that is exacerbated by the message, the marketing message that you're putting out. It's a big secret. It's a big mystery. It's a big, you know, this is the biggest secret. It's perpetuated by marketing people. 
Now, the thing I think about marketing is that marketing is wholly necessary. Like, essentially, if you aren't doing sales and marketing in your business, you don't have a business. You know, you might be in a very privileged situation where you're at the end of your career, you don't need any new customers, that's absolutely fine. That isn't running a business. But if you are in a business, and I define marketing as finding, winning, and keeping customers profitably, if you're not doing that, you are essentially not in business. So yeah. tell me, Ed, how do you feel about marketing? I think it's, um, I think it's the devil's work. I think it is done by charlatans and scab hounds. And it is a series of uh, perpetuated artificial conversations that generally ignore all the potential that real marketing has to communicate. It shouldn't be called marketing. It should be called communicating. Because marketing infers a degree of manipulation. Now, if you think about what marketing okay. does, and in its essence, marketing can sell anything to anybody. And the proof of that is that it sells people cigarettes. No one who smokes thinks it's doing them any good. They still buy it. It's, uh, it sells them alcohol. No one that drinks believes that that's doing their body any good. But marketing still persuades people to go out and drink alcohol. It sells them cars they don't need. Because somehow marketing persuades people that they need these things. Uh, marketing, in its essence, marketing doesn't sell you a product, it sells you a better version of yourself. And once the client understands that that's what they're selling, and they get it, and the agency can participate in that, that's what you're selling. To whoever the customer is, whomever, B2C, B2B, marketing sells them a better version of themselves. Now, once you get that on board and get that in your head and talk to your, talk to your client about the reality of what you're selling, that establishes value. Value on your behalf to your client and a real understanding from your client's behalf of what you're doing. And then if you want to talk about the techniques that you apply, there's, you know, you know the D, D times V plus FS overcomes R, you know that one? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, let me, oh, let me tell you. Right, okay. If anyone, if anyone's going to watch any bit of our conversations and all the other rambling nonsense that we do, they can forget all that. If they watch this bit and take this on board, this is the bit that's happening to you every single day you're being marketed to. D is dissatisfaction. And you can persuade people they're dissatisfied with whatever it is, with their car, with their clothes, with the brands they wear, the, the beer they drink, the fags they smoke. You can persuade anyone they're dissatisfied about it. And then you've got dissatisfaction, that's D, times V. V is vision. Imagine all those dissatisfactions being taken away by what I'm going to give you. So V, you explore the vision of what it would mean if you smoked those cigarettes, drank that beer, drove that car, wore those clothes, paint that vision, and then FS, first steps. The first step is go out and buy my beer, go out and smoke those fags, go out and buy that car. All of that overcomes resistance because we're all resistant in some way or other. We don't want to spend the money or we have some doubt. So if you go back through that marketing chain, the deeper you can persuade somebody they're dissatisfied, and the higher you can elevate that vision of what they will become and be if, you, if they buy what you're selling, then the first step is buy it. All of that will overcome their resistance. And you think of any advert you've ever seen, anything on telly, anything in the cinema, anything off the page, anything on TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, every single piece of marketing is doing the same thing. It's telling you as a human being, you'll be better as a consequence of buying this thing. That's it. So oh. and you you've just you have just run through all the ads you've ever seen on telly. Anyone watching this is thinking about what they've watched recently, what they've seen in mags, what they've seen on YouTube. It simply works to that formula. Now, the sooner as a marketing person you tell your client that's what you're going to do, the client's happy with that because they, they understand every single time you present something that you are performing within that formula. 
So they know that they're spending the money with the right person, and they also understand the techniques that you're applying when you present your work. So when you present a suite of advertising, they know why it is what it is. They've already got in their heads the fact that this is the formula that's going to work for them. Now, that's what marketing does every single day of the week. I see. And you okay, can't... here's the question. You say marketing does that. I'm not entirely convinced. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar. I wasn't familiar with that formulation, but I'm familiar with those ideas. If that's the case, and that's what marketing is good at, why is marketing so bad at selling itself? Because if you talk to any business type person, they will tell you the first thing you stop investing in in a recession is marketing. Marketing's a waste of money, blah, blah, blah. Nobody gets the value of marketing. Whilst all of those people are probably the least satisfied people on the planet in terms of the performance of their business, in terms of sales and profits and blah, blah, blah. Why, are marketing, why is marketing so shit at selling itself? Because it doesn't tell people the truth. The truth is that which I've just described. When I go to see clients now, I walk in and I say, what's the problem? Which bit of the business isn't working? Why am I here? And I explain my D, B, F, S, R. I explain that that's what I'm going to do for them. But I won't do it for them if I don't agree with their product. And I won't do it for them if I don't like them. And I won't do it for them if I don't think they're going to appreciate the value I can bring to them. Now, that's me repelling clients. But most, and I can do that yes. because I don't have an agency anymore. I don't have the overheads. I hire people in to do all the bits that I need done. So I can say that happily. I don't have to drive um, a, a sales machine to keep people sitting at desks in an office with lots of pot plants and expensive bits and bobs. But for my, yeah. for my client, my potential client, they've got two problems. They've got the problem of not generating enough leads, which is bad enough on its own, which is really causing problems in the company because they ain't got enough, as, as, as much money as they want. Then the second problem, yeah. which, is, which is bewildering, is who the frickin' heck do I choose to do this job, which is so important, because I haven't got enough money in my company. Then you go to the third problem, which is I need to find someone that's really good but they're going to cost me more money than I can afford to pay because I haven't got enough money because my business isn't doing what it should be the way of marketing. So yeah. marketing missells itself because it believes that it can pull the wool over its customers' eyes. And if it didn't do that, if it just said, this is what I know, this is what I've done, this is what I can prove, and if you want to work with me, I will charge you this money. This is what it's going to, this is what it's going to cost to see your business change. Most people don't do that. I think marketing people undersell themselves. If they're any good, they really ought to be able to say up front, this is exactly what I'm going to charge. This is my day rate. This is the job rate. This is the job and finish money. And I'm, I won't do it any less because I know I'm going to add value to your business. So when I've stopped doing this, it'll go on working. And I think marketing people undersell themselves, A, by not telling the truth, and B, by not charging enough. Because if you don't charge enough, you don't get good people. So I run an agency and I tried to get the best I could afford. And you've seen the same yes. thing in the parts you've used, if you and the and the supply side. If you've got if you don't make enough money in your business to hire good people, your business doesn't last. So it doesn't last. So okay. does that answer the question, Martin? It no, it doesn't. No, okay. I've got different. So why don't they just tell them the truth? I think they they can't deliver. I think that customers, businesses think it's impossible for them to be generating the leads. Yeah. And the agencies think it's impossible for them to be de de generating leads. And so they lie. They <laughs> and do. then if they, they get do. three months out, they're happy they not go and lie to the next. Yeah. They'll exactly. get better and better at lying. Yeah. So, so I've got a different rationale. My rationale with clients is I talk to them about um, cost of customer acquisition. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, you are spending time and energy and money already on acquiring customers. My whole purpose of being here is because I, I want to get beyond the lead because leads are also bullshit. It's got to be about sales. So my mission in being here is to increase the number of, uh, increase the number of leads you generate, decrease the cost of those leads, and the cost of increase the number of conversions and increase profitability, and that's what you should be interested in. Now that works beautifully because then you say, 
you sit down with a fag packet and you say, okay, how much do you spend on sales? How much do you spend on marketing? How much do you spend on cars, computers, blah, blah, all of that stuff, print, all of that. And how many new customers are you generating a year? And that will give them in a second their, their customer cost of customer acquisition. Yep. And you can say, well, there, there you go. Hey, ho, your cost of customer acquisition is £6,000 per customer. You're generating £4,000 per customer. You're selling yourself out of business already. So that's kind of my rationale. I think I'm probably, I'm not a practical person, but maybe I'm a little bit more of a practical marketer than a, than a, than a designer type marketer You're type. Right. I, th I think that's quite right. like a difference. So that's why they lie, because they don't know how they're going to get that work done. That's right. Because actually getting that work done relies on response. It relies on somebody outside looking at the thing and saying, that makes me feel bad. I want to feel better. Can these people make me feel better? And marketing companies aren't doing that. They're too busy bullshitting customers. I think you're absolutely right. Good. I really do. I, I know that you and I have spoken about this before, but... There's a huge amount of mystery around marketing, which it doesn't have to be like that. What you've just described is incredibly important to a customer because they have to understand what, what you will do. You're very analytical in the stuff that you do when you go to work. And you can give them that CPA, yeah. the cost per acquisition. You will talk about CPA. If they've never heard it before, then you're going to explain it to them. And that is on the balance sheet at the end of every month. Boom, that's your CPA. Yes, like yes. It. And that's profit. It is yeah. Literally, like people will be all excited. I've got a 25, I've got a 20% margin. Well, actually, your cost of customer acquisition is 25%. You are selling yourself out of business. You know, that is exactly what's going on. Okay, good. So what did I want to ask you? Um, you see, for me, effective marketing is just having the right product and then landing the right message on the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the process I'm, I'm thinking about. And, and that fits in with what you're saying, because the message then is probably you're not as happy as you should be. You could be happier, you know, that, that kind of messaging. So what is your recommendation then if, if I am a small business and I'm dissatisfied with the performance of my business, and I am looking to improve my business through marketing and sales, what would your recommendation be? Oh, Martin. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> know that you can afford to buy the best you can get. That's it. For a small company, are you, are you talking about uh, SMEs with five people in, 10 people, 15, or a sole trader, or what? Because it's all different to each of those. Yeah. Well, I think at the, if it's a sole trader, God help them. <laughs> yeah. Especially now, God help them, you know. Yeah. You have to have time, energy, and money to invest. And if you don't have that, then, you know, go to networking meetings and, you know, do whatever you can, but make sure you do whatever you can. Now, internationally, they reckon that the average cost of customer acquisition is 30% of turnover. So if you're a sole trader, then my advice to a sole trader would be spend a third of your week making sure you have customers. And then this ties into like the other end of marketing, which is about the pricing and all of these things. You've got to know that they need to, your customers need to generate the money you need to do the marketing. So that's my advice, very low end. That's a terrifying message there, Martin. When you walk into a company and say, spend that amount of money to keep your yeah. company viable, they shit themselves, don't they? And rightly so, because that if but they're not, not spending, the message is you probably are spending that amount of money already to sustain yourself. Or, you know, they're, they're probably doing it already. But if they're not, then the sooner, you know, I'm probably better at repelling clients than you. I just I just quote them stupid amounts of money and they go away. Um, so, <laughs> but we go to business again. We have no clients at all. <laughs> I'm down to one. I've got lots of time for photography and um, chatting to people like you. So the thing is, the thing is that the sooner they get that message, and there's lots of messages in that, like be the most expensive in your market. Do you know what I mean? Do you want to sell a Rob in real life or do you want to sell a Rolls Royce? Because if you want to sell a Rolls Royce, you better make sure you're charging to build the Rolls Royce. That's, that's kind of my message to them.
And if they don't understand that marketing is about buying customers, yeah. the sooner they understand that, the better. Do you think part of the answer to your question, which I haven't successfully answered at all, is that people make the decision about who they will hire to do their marketing, unless they're a big international and they go through the agency process. Most SMEs and small companies make a decision about marketing with very, very little, little information, either intuitively inside them about what marketing is, or information they get from outside. So they may yeah. ask a colleague, oh, I need marketing in my widget business. Who have you used in your sprocket business? But the sprockets are different than the widgets. So the person asking the question is asking the wrong person the question. So the second thing about choosing, and this is really what we're trying to get towards here, the second part of choosing who you're going to work with is getting it right. Your stat about the, the, uh, the revolving door three months with an agency is an absolute dereliction of duty from both sides, primarily from the client who's doing the hiring. They haven't bothered to put the yeah. craft work in to find out what they're buying. So the exposure time spent by a client choosing their supplier ought to be 20 times longer than what they're currently doing. I remember going around pitching for work. I'd have an hour's meeting with somebody I produce a report, send it back, and expect that to get me business. The attrition. And it rate, did. Well, it did, but it got me the wrong kind of business because what, what can you tell in that? Would you, would you choose to spend five years of your life doing something that's critical to you on the basis of one hour's worth of exposure? Other people buy houses in half an hour, but I'm talking about personal it's relations. Worth and this is where we're coming, I think, to the fault of customers. Because, like, when you and I were doing all those talks, those um, Sussex Enterprise breakfast, and we were talking to 100 people every other week, and, you know, I would go and see those people, and one of them sat me down, I went to see him, he'd see me talk for 15 minutes, and he's like, you're going to have to work pretty hard not to work for me. <laughs> Based on 15 minutes of me pitching some whatever it was at the time, you know. No, but and it, and that it's a completely subjective decision. It isn't objective at all. And the way that clients engage with agencies, certainly my experience and what I hear, is that it is always a subjective experience. They buy a dog and they want to bark themselves. You know, so it's like, no, you want it like this, I want it like this, I want it like this, and you're like, well then. Why the fuck am I here? Do you know what I mean? It's like, you are right. somebody I'm massively skilled. If you've got a checklist of things that need to be done, get onto Upwork and find yourself an Indian or a Bulgarian person and get them to do it for $5 an hour. Do that. Do you know what I mean? If you need help with your marketing, then I'm get out of the road. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It doesn't matter how objective a process it is. If you invite a parade of shit show agencies in to come and bullshit you about what they're going to do, it's like, how could you possibly make... So this is the dire situation that marketing is in, is that, right. what the fuck do you do? Know. Like, literally, what the fuck? You need this thing in your business. You need it. And there's, there's no answer. Like, you're in the way of it. The people who supply the service are in the way of it. What the fuck, what the fuck do you, you know do? what? There's this thing, isn't there? Um, people believe that their relationships with their nearest, dearest, loved ones, wives, mistresses, children are special things where, uh, of course, it's all about trust. It's all about that openness and transparency and that yields a proper relationship. They don't carry those innate human qualities into the relationships they have when they go to work. But that's what drives no, the no. relationship. That's what makes it work. Now, um, I, when I had to run the agency, I took on clients. I'm not going to name them. I took on clients. I thought, what, a, what an ass! He doesn't value, he or she doesn't value what we're doing. They've got no idea that we're still here at 3 in the morning producing this stuff to make sure it's perfect. All they do is try and drive the price down. What kind of, I mean, what kind of relationship have you or I ever had in our lives where we have tried continually, I'm assuming it's not an abusive relationship, to abuse the relationship? And yet people, when they hire marketeers, 
persist in trying to drive down the price, increase the quality. It's the, it is in the, the best marketing relationships are where there is an absolute even flow of equitable pe people talking about equitable things. So your clients, if you're supplying marketing, your clients' demands are the most important thing you can ever have. And that's for every single one of your clients. And you can't do that. You need to have fewer clients to do that for all the clients you have left. If you're the client, you need to be super important to your marketing agency. You need to know that if you found up and said, I'm taking the work away from you, that's going to hurt. But also, yes. as the agency, you need to be able to say to your client, you know what? I just don't think this is working at the moment. Why isn't it working? The CPA might be all right for you, but it doesn't work back at base because, because, because. Now, you and I both know, I won't name the guy, but we worked way back in the day with a guy that he would go into work in the week between Christmas and New Year. He'd sit down at his desk, he'd look through the books, he'd check out the, the clients, and he'd find the six worst performing clients on his books, and he'd phone them up in the first week of January, and he'd say, you know what, it's not working. And I don't know why it's not working, but it's best for you. It's like, you know, it's not you, it's me. It's best for you if you take your business elsewhere. And he did that, and his business absolutely rocked, because the time he freed up, because all those clients were the ones, the age of 20 rule, 20% 20 of the clients, 80% of the problems, they were the ones that were the ball ache. They were the ones that were phoning up at 6 o'clock in the evening going, I need my work done by tomorrow. So you need to keep all the staff working. Yes. Now, that, that, that's, not, that's not, a, a, it's not a durable relationship. It is broken as soon as either side does that to each other. So back to your question. People need to be honest as marketeers to their clients about what they can do. But their clients need to be honest about why they're choosing that marketeer. Is it because... You know, people choose things most ridiculous. Most ridiculous, you know, the sexy account executives of either gender. When I had account executives, they had to be on it, on it. And we did that intentionally. Yeah. And we would, tra I tell you yeah. what, we train our account executives um, the, the kind of cod psychology of body language, which yes. you put up, to make sure that we got that client. Because I had to feed the monthly. Yeah. Now, is and that that's, is that you've got a machine that you have to feed? It's just yeah. like so that. But let's not go there because I don't think we've got time today. But also, okay. staff are oh, a freaking man. nightmare. <laughs> that's the, like the, finding the, people who are actually interested to do the work is really. just a disaster. Yeah, we'll have a chat about that because I think that's interesting for our for our, for the clients that we want and the clients that we've had. Uh, and the clients we might get, it's really important that they know how that marketing is being organized. And they need to know the, etern the internal workings of how you are delivering to your client the stuff that you promised them. I think they need to get it. Yeah. Well, I love that. It's like yes. an open book, the open book policy. It's stuff they've done in America. I think that, side. Yeah. I think the relationship has to be that good. There has to be a huge amount of trust. Like the, the, the things that I've done most recently where I've been most successful are where I've had the most space just to get on and do what needs to be done. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that is, is gold dust because otherwise you're right, you've got the customer on the phone, the client on the phone every 20 minutes, right, what's up with this, what's up with this, it doesn't work. And that basically comes down to this distrust but that comes around to then why are marketing people spending so much time bullshitting their customers? It's like that doesn't, you know, it, it seems Martin, like a group. Martin, question for you. Would you rather be paid on a, and tell your clients the answer to this one. Would you rather be paid on a job and finish or a retainer? Um, I don't know if there is such thing as job and finish. I think, for me, marketing is an ongoing investment, and and really, there's no mystery to it. Just do the do the freaking work, you know. Just do the thing. Like post where you need to post. Put the content on your site. Do the events. Do the press. Do the whatever. Do the network. Do the do the freaking work. That's the secret of marketing. 
that nobody wants to tell you. So I, I don't think there's such thing as a job and finish. Um, I, I'm not going to get involved in building a website for anyone anymore. I'm not going to, you know, what I want to be doing is what I did with a customer recently is tripling their turnover in three years, in two years. You know, that's, that's what I would do. I want the customer coming back to me saying, Martin, I want to give you more money because look what you did with that, with that amount of money that we gave you in the first instance. Yeah. Did that client come back and say that? No. Are they no. gone? Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> now, so, it's such a, it's such a strange thing. The, thing. The, the clients that you've had, I've had, and that you want, they don't get the chance to witness these kind of conversations. But they should. No. Because the thing that... Well, that's why we're having this conversation. That's, that's exactly right. The thing that you want to say to your client, if they're a client that you want, that you want to work with, that you can really make the difference in the company, and you know that and recognise it, and probably from the first meeting onwards, you've got a good idea of the, of the change you can make. You basically want to say to the client, I'm a freaking genius. I can absolutely do this and say it to them and be convinced that you're right. But of course, you can never say that to a client because they think you're mad. But there are clients that you want to work with where you absolutely, you know, I've, I've tried it. I've said to clients, this isn't just about you choosing me. I'm going to choose you and I want to work with you because yes. you're interested. And that open, it doesn't work with everybody because some people are confronted and conflicted by that sort of honesty. But again, if that's the way you're going to conduct your business, you as a supplier, then that's the way that's going to leach out in the end. If you try to be anything other than that which you are, naturally, it won't work. And after three months, if you're naturally a kind of emotive person that needs to get in someone's head to make sure you're getting it right, but you don't reveal that in your first meeting, and it takes three months to get it, you're going to get sacked after three months, so get it out on meeting one. If you really think that this is yeah. a client you can make a difference for, be passionate about it absolutely nail it so that by, you, by the time you finish the meeting the client doesn't want to work with anybody else on you because you have got under their skin but you don't want to do that with yes. everybody because you end up with the wrong clients now again from the client side they need to get that they need to understand that marketing isn't just an engineering process it does have the d b f s r but that's the principles but how those principles are applied the content creation that drives the success of that process is something that a client ought to be able to understand at the level of it being produced. And that degree of honesty yes. and transparency can convert the client from, or the potential client from reluctance to a client and an ongoing client. Because no, the client doesn't want to invest in you and lose you in three months because they've got to go through the process again. And you don't want to invest in them and lose them in three months. So you're right. There's a lot yeah. of bullshit that goes on about it. Clear the bullshit away. Yeah. You've got a proper working relationship and you've got a lovely marriage. Yes. Did I make it clear enough? I definitely don't want any clients. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, absolutely, Crystal. And the way this is a conversation, yeah. going, you and me, mate, we're going to be stacking shelves down at Lidl's in a couple of months' time. Well, you'll be in Bali down at the beach. Um, yes. <laughs> but we're, what we've I'll done. I'll be in the making my face. Nervous, yes. I'll come visit you when you're oh, thank you, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be on a bench somewhere on the south coast. But but I think partly because well certainly for me being stricken in age, I've got to a point where I actually care so much I don't care about the stuff I don't need to care about. And I don't need every yes. I don't need every client in the world to be happy. And I don't no. employ thirty people at desks to feel a sense of status. I just need to know I'm doing good work for good people. And I know, no, I'm saying this about me, but I know you well enough, Mr. Hendy, to know that although you're a very exuberant personality, you actually hide a lot of your real skills from your clients. I don't think they know what, and you can quote this, I don't think they know the difference you're going to make for them. They just need to trust you more. I think you've got... Well, I, maybe it's gone now, because now I'm blowing the lid off the whole, the whole thing. You know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm like the wizard. I'm pulling back the curtain. I'm like, this is this is all the bullshit they say. This is what it actually means. This is why it's important. This is why you should do it. Yes. So hopefully, I won't ever have to pitch for a client ever again because they'll all become educated and they'll know and they'll do it right and they'll be much more successful. That's my new mission. I don't want a client. I want to fix the broken marketing. That's what I want to do. That's so fun. on that note. There's a guy advertising on YouTube, and he's an English guy, and he must be about 24. 
And his pitch is, um, basically, did you know that businesses will pay you between one and $2,000 a month to do their marketing? Did you know that you don't even need to know how to do marketing? Did you know that if you had 10 clients, that would be $120,000 a year? And did you know that if you had 20 clients, that would be $240,000 a year? And you don't even have to do the work. Now, it, it, that, it, what is that? What is that? Like, I've had 20 clients. It's a freaking nightmare. Like, who wants 20 clients? Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just insane. But so, so that's my question then is what is your advice to anyone who's thinking about starting a marketing agency? Don't. That's my advice. <laughs> unless you, unless you want to have, okay. If you, if you want your heart broken and you believe in the power of what you do and it's important to you that your belief in that power means that you work for worthy businesses and do a brilliant job, then don't start an agency. Be an individual that sells that and collect people around you that can help you in that endeavor. Don't, don't build a company that relies upon having offices. Keep your keep your overheads lean and low. If you're a person yes. that doesn't give a monkey's about anything and you want to make a pile of money, marketing is the right place to be. It's absolutely the right place to be because there is one sucker client born every minute. And because the client is in the same degree of self-delusion and artifice as their supplier, they absolutely deserve each other. Go on. Yes. Start your agency, pack it full of pretty people that know sweet Fanny Adams, get them all to go out there, flog them out of it. You will make a lot. And, you know, you, you and I both know a lot of people that have piled it high, sold it expensive, and done, they've done financially very well. So you're going to start an agency. Wait. Don't, don't yeah, be very, very clear. What do you want out of it? Do you want to change the world? Do you want to change your clients? Do you want to change you? What do you, do you want to make a lot of money? Subsist? You have to know what it is your aim is. Otherwise, you will be a rudderless ship. You will end up in the wrong place. Yes. Now, I thought you might go another way with that, but that's okay. When you okay. take on a client, essentially what you'll, I'll come back to the, the way I thought you would go, which is what, what my recommendation would be. Um, but when you take on a client, the mission is to fix the riddle of how, like, what is the right product, who are the right targets, what are the right messages, where are the right places. Like, that is the mission, is to, to fix that piece of the puzzle. And once that's fixed, then it's just an ongoing do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, so basically, are you saying if you have no morals whatsoever, your morals are in the gutter, then start a marketing agency, you can make a lot of money. What's on, Mr. Henley? Mr. Henley. I launched myself on our bed for nine years when I was running the Effective Marketing Company. I thought I was changing the world. And after nine years, I'm like, I haven't even touched this. I'm not even getting close. So here's what I thought you might say, which is the direction that you've gone since you stopped the agency proper, which is developing your own businesses and marketing your own products because it seems to me if you're good at marketing, why would you do it for somebody else? At yeah. all. You know, if yeah. you are good at marketing, yeah. get yourself a product and market it. I don't think... Well, but that's a brave decision to make, isn't it? Because if you're good at marketing, that means you're probably not good at anything else. So if you're going to run your own business, but you're the marketing person, you need to bring people around you that will support you running that business. But I know you, me, and a third party about, God damn, how many years ago? Probably 15 years right. ago. We went, we, we took the afternoon off and we sat down of an afternoon, Friday afternoon, a lovely old country hotel, uh, teas, coffees, all very nice, a couple of uh, bourbon biscuits, and we said to each other, what the freaking heck, uh, WTF, what are we doing? Because we're going to go back to our offices this afternoon and work there on a Friday night till about 8 o'clock to get work finished for class. What is the essential difference between us and our clients? And the essential difference was that we created value for the client, but none for ourselves. We created value yes. in that, which they then benefited from for many, many years, years, if not decades afterwards. Yes. 
and we had to find another client. So we all looked around the piece and said, well, what can we do that would give us a chance to own our own businesses? Now, I've moved off into other areas where I've used my marketing skills, working with very well-chosen colleagues so that they can do the work that they do, which I don't understand. So finance, process, you're much more of a process man than me. Um, and I've managed to create a couple of businesses that I'm very pleased with. Um, but that's not a decision for everybody. Some people are really happy just to be the marketing person. But I wanted to invest in my own business, whatever skills I have, in that business, building the brand, building the reputation, blah, 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 rather than continually invest in somebody else's. But I don't recommend that as a path for everyone because it is, it means you're the business owner. And that brings a whole load of new complexities to your life. And yeah, sure. but we're talking about people who might start a marketing agency. Yeah, now, yeah. the thing is, I think that would be my recommendation for everyone is because the only point of having a business is to have something that increases in value. So that at some point in the future, somebody will sit down and write you a big fat check for it. Otherwise, if you don't want that, then you might as well just be employed. And I think the thing about marketing is, like obviously you didn't start three, four businesses, whatever it is in one go. It's kind of a full-time job. Until you've worked out that formula, that part of the puzzle, like what the product is, who those things, it's a full-time job. It's not done until that's done. So that would be my recommendation to anyone. If I'm with you in 100%, if you have the morals of an alley cat, go rate people for their marketing budgets. You will do very well. If you are interested in yourself and having something that's valuable in the future, don't start a marketing And you're good at marketing, yeah. don't start a marketing agent. You know, be employed, but if you want to do something for yourself, find a product. You know how to do that if you're good at marketing. Find people who are looking to spend money on that thing. You know, that makes so much more sense to me. And, and, I, and I, even when we had that conversation 15 years ago, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, just going to go and do that. I didn't do it. I, like, sold it on for another whatever it was, eight, seven, six, five years, whatever it was. I know the other guy who was there is still soldiering on with the marketing. It's like... He's a genius. Yes. He's he is a genius. a genius. As are you, yeah. In your way, you're a bloody genius, mate. You know it. You... You need to tell people more that you're a genius. So I'm going to be very frank with you. You need to go out there and tell people, I am. You are. You know, those those uh, mornings you referred to that you and I used to go out around the sort of rubber chicken tour, talking to people about marketing. Yeah. I'd stumble onto the stage bewildered, full of coffee, with my eyes crossed and my wig falling off. And you come bounding on energy, <laughs> content, analysis, proper process and i watch you with awe and bewilderment i'm thinking how can he be that good bloody half past six in the morning to 50 people in the room none of whom wanted to be there i mean i you know i'm going to sing your praises mate because you do a colossal job for the clients but it's hard for you to say that to a client so next time you've got a client you want you bloody send them to me and i'll tell them how good you are Okay, I'll do that. But there's, there's no such thing as a client I want. I am absolutely perfectly happy where I am. I am going to change the world, and I'm going to be involved in marketing, and I'm just going to let people know exactly what the score is so they can go and do it and they can be yeah. successful in their businesses. Sure. This is my contribution to the revolution. This is, oh, this is what's going case. on here. Yeah, I'll come back to your question about what should you do if you want to start a marketing agency? Well, I would repeat the thing about clarity. Understand what you want out of it. Understand right down to a kind of core, visceral level. Do I just want a pile of cash, a huge amount of sex, uh, or do I want to change the world in, in, in a more philosophical way? And just be true to whatever it is you've decided to do. Don't misrepresent you or the business that you're getting into. And you can choose yes. on a spectrum from you're going to be an absolute angel through to an absolute devil. You choose where you sit and then deliver, deliver, deliver. Don't change in the middle. Don't yes. go from an angel to a devil, the devil to an angel. It's just confusing. Yes. Clarity, clarity right from the okay. off. I think that's good advice. I wouldn't recommend my worst enemy to start a marketing agency. I really wouldn't. 
I'd recommend my worst enemy any day of the week because that would be a word of crippling them. They would be bust in every single way, financially, morally, spiritually, humanly, bust. It's a grim, yes. grim business. Back to your question about charlatans and schmatterhans. Snake oil yes. sales. Snake oil salesmen yeah. are marketeers, and clients should never forget that. You're talking to a snake oil salesman, that when they're talking to you, if you're a client, you watch what this person does when they're talking to you. If they shift their body language so that their left hand's on the table, but they move that to the right hand's on the table, you, you as a client, you can deceive them, because if you then mirror that body language, they think that you are agreeing with them. And that's how mar marketeers are not only deceiving the class clients, they're deceiving the clients as well. Yes, yes, and this is this is where it goes on. Right, so we've yeah. got about nine minutes left. I don't know how much battery I've got left. Okay. Can we do another about the process? You said that oh, you wanted yeah. to talk about that. Can we? I'd love, I'd love to. That's probably me asking you questions though, because uh, when I was running the agency, my job was creative head, so the process is left to other people. But the process is is what drove it. Yes, all... yes. Okay, like what is that broad brush in the future. Yes. The question I want to ask you now. What is your take on the global world health economic situation? How should marketers, if they're in-house or their agencies or their, their business owners, how should people be responding to what's going on right now? Is it their responsibility to do so? Sorry to answer a question with a question, but I watched a marketeer a couple of years ago in an open forum to a room full of people say that one of uh, three, the three most exciting words they'd ever heard in marketing. I'm thinking, oh, here we come, here we come, here we go. This is going to be the thing that's going to change the world. This is the bit where people engage themselves with a new honesty. This is the bit where people get to understand that they don't need to be deceived by the things they don't need. And this person said the three most exciting words they'd ever heard in the world of marketing and advertising were rinse and repeat. Because mm. a plastic bottle full of shampoo was used twice as fast. They didn't need to wash their hair anymore. Their hair was washed. The stuff, yeah. the, gunk, the gunk in the plastic pot, you know, I say this as a fellow with no hair, so it's irrelevant. So the gunk in the plastic pot was got through twice as fast. So the agency that came up with rinse and repeat did a great job for their client and a shit job for the world because... The plastic bottles ended up in the sea more quickly. The soap went down the drain more quickly. What was the question? Was yes. Man? What was the question again? The question was how should oh, thank marketers you. Now I'm be back. responding to what's going on in the world currently? Yeah. I mean, there's a whole other conversation we could have about the F the ethical thing of marketing are we selling stuff that people don't need of course we are um, we can have that conversation another time but basically i think the world is shitting itself right now yeah would your recommendation be to anyone who is a business owner or a marketer or a salesperson what what should they be doing right now well first off decide if it matters to you a lot of people decide that's not my problem you know i'm doing all right i've got the things i want why would I bother to change if I have all the things I want? But I, I think they're talking, are you suggesting people should have more of a social conscience? Is that your underlying thrust? No, we're definitely going in two different directions. Two different directions. I'm, like, in 2008, I presented at Brighton City College this thing just after the recession hit about, it was like one of my barnstorming, it was probably my crowning glory as a speaker. And it was like, basically, they say no one expected this, but the newspapers were talking about it for three years, blah, blah, blah. More, more millionaires created in a recession at any other time. Blah, blah. It was the time that the keep calm and uh, carry on signs had come out. That was a good news story. They were turning over 300 grand a month or something, something, something. So I, I ended up saying to them, and my advice is not keep calm and carry on. My advice is get excited and kick ass. That was my response. Because the way I see these things, 
because I lived in South Africa for a period of times, is like the British economy is like the teacups at the fun fair. You know, nothing really exciting ever happens, and there's no opportunity on the teacups. The teacups. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting snogged on the wall. You know what I mean? That's, that's what's going on. So I don't know if you had a particular view on that. Should people be doing more marketing? Should I... I, I, I know I've given you the answer that I wanted you to well, give you me. Kind of, you've given me such a broad question. Uh, should people be doing more marketing? I'm afraid that breaks down into about a million different variables because, of course, it depends on what your business is as to whether you should or not. But if you're a marketeer, I think the central point of what you were saying is that there is always opportunity. Clients yes. need marketing and customers need to understand what they're buying. So... Yeah. One of the things, one of the things that people find hard to grasp is change. A lot of us are resistant to change, but if you embrace change, what's happened with COVID, uh, you don't need to look any further than what's happened to a company like Zoom. And we're using Zoom now. We may yes. have used it before, but uh, Zoom has put on 240% on its share value. It's put on 300 start. It's a massively changing company because it's taken advantage of the opportunity. As a marketeer, look for new opportunities. Yes. And it's down to you to decide what the ethics, morality, or any, any other part of that is. But if you want to do marketing, there will be a stack of opportunities for you out there, regardless of, of whether you want to do good or, you know, do good or not. Yes. It's of work. And marketing really is, is enticing change all the time. It's inviting somebody to change from what they were buying before to what it is you want them to buy. So they give up one brand to come to your client's brand. And as a marketeer, that's incredibly exciting. Well, if all you want to do is work super, super hard, there's plenty of clients out there that, that if you can persuade them that you're the fellow to do it, um, they, will, they will engage you. There's, there's always continual work. And I think the thing is that, I mean, we can have a whole conversation about this, but in these situations, there is opportunity. Like your customer, your competitors will be going out of business. Their customers will be looking for suppliers. If you take my broad kind of definition of what marketing as an activity is, deciding on products, finding targets or identifying markets, landing the right messages on the right people at the right time, then, then that's what all of marketing is. And I think, yeah, it's interesting. Like Facebook shares have gone up. Zoom shares have gone up, you know, so the, the market's shifted all of a sudden. There's opportunity in that for people, you know. So, yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I think. I also think that there should be some ethics in marketing. I don't think we should be selling shit to people they don't need. That's what I think. I, you know, I'm a revolutionary communist. We're going to have to have another conversation about that on another channel. It's not appropriate. You're certainly it. looking like the revolutionary communist now. <laughs> With the, with the lovely beard. Look at you, basing yourself on Cuban leaders. But I'm not going to argue against your discussion about ethics. Um, there's another underlying point about change and where we're going and what's happening in COVID, because we're recording this, good listener, on Thursday the 17th of September 2020. And we're, as you know, if you're in it, and as you ought to understand, and this has been watched in five years' time, we're at the end of an extraordinary catastrophe uh, in terms of what's happened in 2020. We're, we're at the start of a new reality. Um, now, here's a nasty little thing just to, just to round out in the last few minutes of our conversation. Um, the Earth has seen at least five extinctions, possibly six, because the extinction that happened before the dinosaurs was about global warming, and it was caused by volcanic activity about 250 million years ago on the third, Thursday, 17th of September. Um, and the global activity of the volcanoes caused so much CO2 that the Earth warmed to the point where it wiped out the dominant species of the day that then allowed another species to rise, and that was dinosaurs, which in turn were wiped out then by the meteor. Now, if you want to talk about ethics, whether that's a problem for a marketing person or not, is up to them to decide. But what we seem to be doing with a great deal of success at the moment is causing the seventh extinction. The difficulty is that it could well be us. Don't expect that from marketing, do you? 
Well, they should be feeling dissatisfied now. They better go out of us this year. Absolutely. Martin, mate, I don't know if we're out of time, but I'll tell you what, this is the kind of conversation that most marketing people ought to have, don't have, and most clients ought to watch and be a part of. They should, and they should like, and they should subscribe, and they should follow, and they should do all of that stuff. Maybe they should go buy my course. Ed, this Thanks. has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I knew. Yes. Thank you. I, you, are I, the man. you are the man every time. Look, oh, can we do this again? I've loved it. Yeah, well, let's, um, I've, I've only got four or five people on my list that I want to talk to, so maybe I'll be back to you in like six well, weeks. Yeah. Whenever. Okay. I'll, yeah. yeah. I'll be so, waiting in anticipation, Marcy. You are an absolute legend. Okay, so let's draw a line. Cheers, Ed. We'll speak Cheers, to you Martin. again. All the best. You take care. See you. Thanks, buddy. Bye.